Good morning or good afternoon almost, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first live daily show on Facebook on photography at photojoseph.com slash, no, <laughs> at facebook.com slash photojoseph. If you went to photojoseph.com slash Facebook, that would actually take you here. So there you go, same thing but different. So uh, first of all, apologies for the delay today. We didn't go live at 9.30 as we usually do because there was a last minute change of schedule at the doctor's office and I had to kind of rush, rush off to that. And you know, sometimes life just gets in the way. Uh, today's photo moment is a question that came in from a viewer, which is fabulous. I love these. Send me more, send me more. These are the kind of things I want. So this particular question was about a photo that she had taken and that she wished she could have done differently. And uh, she wanted to know how. So let's first start off by just taking a look at the picture in question. So this is the lovely photo. She sent this to me yesterday or day before. And this is the photo that uh, we want to talk about. And her message says, so one morning I woke up and the sun was coming up in the background and the hummingbirds were coming out. And I grabbed my camera and got a great shot of the hummingbird, even froze the wings. The problem I had was the feeder was bright and pretty but the bird was dark. Okay, so let's talk about that. Let me get out of the way. First of all, I love the photo. Uh, the, the bird is silhouetted, and I think that's fantastic. I think that this is beautiful. You got the sun coming through the, the feeder itself. You've got a silhouette of the bird and then a, a kind of silhouette in the background. You know, maybe you'd go in and, and darken the background a little bit, the, um, the ground part there to not make that house so visible. But you know, other than that, I think this is pretty good, but that's not what she's asking. So let's talk about why the bird is dark silhouetted against this bright background. So first of all, <clears throat> what we're talking about here is a vastly different amount of light that is in the background versus the foreground. A camera can only capture a certain amount of dynamic range, a certain amount of stops of light, if you will, uh, and show that at once from your darkest shadows to your brightest highlights there's a range. And so this is when you take a picture of something that's, uh, you know, a guy wearing a black suit standing in the sun next to a bride wearing white. You can expose for the black, you can expose for the white, but odds are you can't really get both of them in the same shot and have detail in the black and detail in the white at the same time. It's just, there's just not enough range in there. And that's what's happening here, but it's even more of an extreme. The sky is, for all intents and purposes, is very bright. Even though it seems like it's still quite dark, the sun is coming up that is illuminated by that big fiery ball thing in the sky. And so that is a lot of light in the background. Meanwhile, on the front, there is probably almost no light hitting the front at all. So you've got this hummingbird with the only light that would be there would be maybe any sunlight that happens to be bouncing off of the window or whatever she's standing in front of, presumably a window which isn't going to be much because most of the light's going to go through the window. Maybe any light that was on in the house that would be shining out. But even if the lights were on in the house shining out, the amount of light coming from your incandescent overhead lights versus what's coming from the sun obviously are massively, massively different. So the amount of light hitting the bird and the amount of light that is in the sky are so dramatically different that a camera is just not going to capture an exposure that's going to show both of those. If you were, if this was staged, let's say that this was a model, the bird wasn't really there and flying around, but it was just something sitting there, you could do an HDR image, right? Where you shoot a photo of exposing for the bird, and then you shoot another photo exposing for the sky, and you blend them together in Photoshop or any other method of blending the shots. Uh, obviously, that's not possible here because it's a hummingbird. It's going to move around. But even if it were possible, that would be one way to do it. And so you'd have an exposure that looks like this, where you've got that sky being beautifully colored, saturated, lit as it is, and then uh, the bird would be silhouetted, just as you see it here in this photo here. Like, there, there we go, in this photo here. Uh, or, uh, or rather than the second shot would be the foreground, the bird lit perfectly, and the background would be completely blown out. It'd be almost pure white because it would be so bright, and then you blend those together. But honestly, even that wouldn't really work that well because you'd have all this feathering coming around, and anyway. Uh, but obviously it's also not possible because the bird is going to move. So when you have a situation like this, where the amount of light between the foreground and the background are so dramatically different, your choices, you basically have two choices, either shoot it the way we just talked about, where you shoot different pictures and then blend them together, or change the light. So you either have to add or remove light from the scene for, or some, from some part of the scene. Now, in this case, we clearly cannot control the sky. We can't turn the brightness down on the sky. So the only thing we can do is turn the brightness up on the bird. So how are you going to do that? Well, you could, if you had really, really bright lighting in the house, crank all that on, shine the light out there, but 
odds are that's still not going to be enough. So typically, if you're trying to balance, if you're trying to light a subject with the sun behind them, sunset or sunrise behind them, you need to add a strobe to the scene. You need to add flash. And adding flash will do that. Now, just turning the flash on on the camera is probably not going to be enough because typically what happens when you turn the flash on the camera, if you just turn it on and you don't do any special mode, you just turn on the flash, the shutter speed is going to be quite high. The shutter speed might be 250th or 125th of a second, which I can pretty much guarantee the shutter duration of this shot was a bit lower than that. Um, we, we say that, I say that because the light even though I said earlier the sun is really bright, it is relatively dark compared to a fully uh, middle of the day shot, right? Middle of the day uh, sunlight. And also the bird's wings are blurry. Now we know that hummingbird's wings move like thousand times a second or something crazy. So almost no matter what, you're gonna get a little bit of motion blur on the wings. She noted that the wings were frozen. They're not frozen, but they've moved a couple of times in the span of that shot. The bird was hovering relatively still. You got the flapping, flapping of the wings in there and that created uh, it exposed enough where you can see the wings. It's not like the wings are completely gone, but they're also not frozen. If they're frozen, then you'd see them completely frozen. If you add a strobe, it might actually freeze them. So that may or may not be what you want to do, but let's, let's forget about that for a second. Um, back to the original point here, when you turn on the strobe, you end up with a higher shutter speed, 250th or 125th of a second, something like that. While that would expose the bird properly, now your background is probably going to be too dark because that 250th of a second exposure isn't enough to allow the light from the background to expose the sensor, film sensor. So you need a combination of things. You need a long enough shutter speed to expose the background and a bright flash to expose the foreground. This is typically where you're going to go into, you might want to go to full manual mode or if you go into shutter priority mode, just all just going to depend on the camera that you have. But if you go to shutter priority mode and turn on the flash, you'll be able to turn the shutter speed down to maybe a sixtieth of a second. I don't know what it would be for this particular shot, but that sounds reasonable. And then have the flash on top of that. Now, if you're if you don't know how to figure out what the exposure is going to be, one way to do that would be to shoot a picture like this. And I realize that we're talking about a hummingbird that may only be there for a few seconds. You may not have time for this, but this is the mental exercise you got to go through. You may shoot a picture just like this one and see what the exposure is. And you look at, you take this, you go, okay, the sky's exposed beautifully. I look at the, the settings and say, okay, it was shot at a 60th of a second. Okay, 60th of a second is the shutter speed, the duration of the shutter is gonna be open that I need to get that beautiful background. But now I need the foreground to be lit. If I just turn on the flash and fire it on automatic, the background's gonna be um, uh, underexposed. Shutter's not gonna be open long enough. So I gotta go into shutter priority or manual set that shutter to that 60th of a second or whatever it was that it shot before where it looked beautiful and then turn the flash on. And at this point, the flash can still be automatic. Now remember, the fact that the shutter's open for a long time isn't going to change, uh, certainly rephrase that, the fact that you've got a long shutter speed and a flash, the flash isn't going to illuminate the background more because it's flashing. The background's super far away. So that flash is not gonna expose it and it's the sky anyway. It's not like you can light the sky with a flash. But that flash will pop that foreground. If you think about it like this, you could go into a totally dark room. You could open the exposure for 10 seconds and then flash on your subject and illuminate the subject. And then do the exact same picture at 250th of a second and it's going to be the exact same exposure. The picture's going to look the same because when the lights were off entirely, there's no light in the room and you had that exposure open, the shutter open for 10 seconds or whatever, there's no light there to expose the film plate. But if you have just a little bit of light in the room and you open it for 10 seconds and you see a little bit of that light and or a little bit more of that light, you see a bit of that light showing up, the flash is going to illuminate the foreground, the background is illuminated by the natural light and so you get a blending of two exposures. Hope that made sense. It's kind of a long rounded a roundabout way of explaining that you are effectively separating your exposures. You're separating your background from your foreground. Your background is filled in by the shutter speed and your foreground is filled in by the flash and aperture combination, but we're keeping it simple here. Flash and automatic, shutter priority, aperture is going to be automatic and that should work. So again, to recap, either two photos and blend them, not accessible here, not really viable here, or long exposure for the background to get that light in the background and a flash to illuminate the foreground. That will then give you that illuminated hummingbird, frozen in time possibly, um, or with that longer shutter speed, you might still get a little bit of blur on there and illuminating the background beautifully as well. So that's, that's the solution. That really is the solution. Probably shutter priority mode, automatic on the flash most likely is still going to work just fine. And away you go. Focus on the bird and shoot. 
and that should give you the shot that you want. So hopefully you'll be able to try that. Hopefully you will have these, uh, another beautiful sunrise with that hummingbird poised perfectly for you there. But even if it's not, fake it, right? Just to test, get, um, I don't know, get a stick, get a ladder, get a broomstick, get something out there and just put a, you know, cut out a picture of a bird if you really want to be special about it. But um, anything, just put anything there where the bird would be. And then come sunrise, you'll do that the night before. And then come sunrise, the sun's coming up. It's, it's at that perfect light that you want. And now test it. Figure out the settings on your camera. Figure out what it needs to be. And then the next day, hopefully the bird comes around or another morning the bird comes around and you're all set and ready to go to get that picture. So there you go. That's it. Uh, let's take one more look at the photo because I think it's a, I think it's a very pretty photo as it is. Uh, it's just not what the viewer was looking for, but I think it's quite nice as it is. Um, Venna is asking, will the flash scare off the Hummer? Entirely possible, but you will have already got the shot. Right, so at that point, the picture's already been taken. The The bird isn't gonna move uh, as the flash fires. So you'll get the shot and the bird might fly away. But, you know, the bird is used to being around houses, seeing people, seeing other objects. Uh, it might not. So there's only one way to find out. Only one way to find out. Um, great question, Lovena. Thank you for, for posting that. Alrighty, any other questions for me on this one before we jump out of here? Um, oh, I wanted to say too, yesterday's photo moment, if you haven't watched it, it was really long because I did this long live shoot thing. I have edited that and there is a shorter version that is quite chopped up, edited together. It's actually kind of fun. It's kind of entertaining to, to, to view the final product. Uh, I uploaded it last night, but then there were some changes I wanted to make. So I'm going to make those right now and get that up. So I will put a link to that in yesterday's photo moment so you can watch the edited version, which is definitely more entertaining than the long one. Um, watching the long one live would, would have been great because, you know, you can interact and so on, but watching the... Uh, Watching the long one afterwards might not be quite as much fun. So we'll, we'll have that one up there later on today, along, of course, with this one uh, we'll post as well. Um, then it's saying dial back the flash maybe. Well, if you mean dialing back the flash so that you don't scare the bird, the the flash needs to be set to whatever it needs to be to expose the, the scene. Right? If you feel that you need to dial the flash back or you find that by dialing the flash back a bit, so meaning it's not as bright, the bird doesn't get scared away, then the way to compensate for that would be to increase the ISO of your camera setting. So to increase the sensitivity of the sensor, that would allow you to use less light from the flash and uh, still expose, get a proper exposure on the bird. So if you find that a low flash uh, intensity doesn't scare the bird, but a high flash intensity does, then that would certainly be a way to work around that. Um, and uh, then you're also saying not to overexpose, dial back the flash not to overexpose. Well, you can't, Remember, the flash is not going to have any effect on the background at all. The flash is going to affect only the foreground. So in this case, if you're in automatic, you can see what the exposure, how it comes out. And presumably, because auto is pretty awesome usually, you're going to get that proper exposure on the bird. And if you don't, then you can always go into full manual. Remember, manual, full manual is not scary. Full manual allows you full control. That's what you're really getting, right? And in a situation like this, the shutter speed is going to affect the background, that big ambient light background. The aperture and flash combination are going to affect the foreground, the close-up elements here. So if you go into full manual, you really do have full control over there. You can set your exposure, your shutter speed so that it gets your background the way you want it. And then you can find a balance with your aperture of depth of field and combination with the light output that gives you the, the intensity that you want. And again, if you don't want it to be too bright because you're afraid it's gonna scare off the bird or it is scaring off the bird, dial that down, increase the ISO or um, open up the aperture more. But if you open up the aperture, you're gonna get less depth of field. And in this, we've got a pretty wide aperture because we've got that nice, you can see the mountain range in the background and, and I think that's good. I think that's what you want in this picture. You don't want a super shallow depth of field picture of the bird and then the background is just a big colorful blur. You wanna see that sunrise in the background. You wanna see that mountain range. You're gonna need that stop down aperture to get that big depth of field, which means you're gonna need a lot of light from the flash and or a high ISO um, setting. So there you go. I think that's uh, that's it. Um, Tadas, Tadas, I think that's right. Sorry, buddy, if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Uh, is asking what program I use to live stream. Um, I'll do a whole show on that, but just very briefly, I am using hardware to live stream. It's uh, called the VDU Pro. I actually did a show on the VDU a while ago because it's it has issues and I had finally figured it out. So if you scroll back a few weeks um, or go to the, it's easiest to go to YouTube. Uh, if you just go to photojoseph.com slash moments, that'll take you to the YouTube page. And then uh, from there, it's easy to scroll through or do a search just for that 
playlist that it'll take you to and find it. But V-I-D-U, V-I-D-I-U Pro, Vid-D-U, like video, but Vid-E-U Pro, uh, that's the hardware that I use to do the streaming. As far as the switching goes, that is a whole other animal. It is a black magic um, ATEM 2ME. It is a 4K multi-input switcher that does all kinds of crazy things. It allows me to do things like put the lower thirds and put the picture in picture, just go to the straight camera here or to switch over to the Mac only view. And I've got a bunch of other presets in here that I use depending on what I'm doing and what's going on. So lots and lots of options there. Uh, you're welcome to dust and uh, looks like we're good. No other questions coming in. So thanks again for watching. Um, this is good. This later time got a lot more questions coming in. Um, I don't know if I can really chant. I think I like my 930 time slot. We'll stick with that for now, but, uh, but we'll see how things go. All right, folks, see you the next time. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.